Well guys, I wanted to uh, talk with you today about the Governor DeSantis of Florida, his uh, proposed bill that was announced, uh, well I first heard about it on Tucker Carlson last night. Uh, and so this bill uh, is supposed to target uh, tech companies and how they uh, how they deal with censorship or deplatforming on uh, of, of of Florida politicians. So this bill, which was um, <clears throat> this bill, which is proposed, it's not written into law yet. It would be specific to uh, to Florida, and they're hoping that uh, this battle against big tech censorship will uh, spread elsewhere and will send a strong send a strong example against tech companies. So in that, in those regards. Uh, I certainly respect uh, the effort being made here. Uh, so, under the proposal, uh, in Florida during an election, uh, the state of Florida, if this passed, would be able to penalize uh, tech companies up to $100,000 a day uh, for deplatforming uh, any political figure uh, you know, during an election. So, so if you're a Florida senator, and if you're in a Florida Senate race, and you say something controversial or downright violent and false, uh, you can't just be outright deplatformed overnight. Um, this is a build on of a previous proposed uh, previous bill uh, called SB five two zero by Senator. Uh, Dan Burgess, Senator Dan Burgess, I believe, uh, according to the uh, Tampa Bay Times, there uh, there's already a bill in place in Florida where if uh, that requires uh, that requires 30 day notice of uh, of a suspension of an account in social media for uh, political figures. So if you're, uh, and, and, and it includes, even if you incite violence, so if you're a, you know, if you're in a Florida Senate race, um, well, I think that's a little bit more broad. So they, they're saying that you have to, it, it, if, uh, if the social media, like let's say Twitter wants to deplatform a senator from, from Florida, they have to uh, provide... Um, they have to provide 30 days notice and, uh, and a specific explanation as to what actions or what uh, faults and exact community guidelines that uh, this politician in Florida would hypothetically would have would have made uh, or would have broken in order to uh, in order to justify censoring them. So they're at, so so this whole. Finding and this whole daily fines adding up on anybody on it on a tech company who uh, who doesn't play by this already set in rule of of uh, or at least a bill that's already been in the works of uh, a thirty day notice um, on any politician for for whatever reason. So basically, the idea is that uh, no matter what a politician says. Uh, they have to they have to abide by some stand, standards of freedom of speech in uh in the state of Florida. And uh and yeah, I mean I, I support this kind of action. Uh I don't know how far it's going to to go, but it is I mean I don't know how far it's going to spread it um as far as policy goes in other states beyond Florida, but it's a good start. Uh, and I think it's uh it's good that we at least have something, uh, I've, well, I think, I think what's going on with DeSantis, their governor, is that he, uh, well, he already has a pretty good relationship with, with Trump, uh, with the former president, because back in 2018, uh, DeSantis, uh, Trump had made, uh, statements through social media, I guess through Twitter, to, um, he 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 uh, supported DeSantis 
in his um, in his in his governor run in 2018, and uh, and don't get me wrong, I mean this this governor is is certainly a controversial figure. Uh, I was really uh, I was horrified by what happened in uh, I think it was Tallahassee uh, that Rebecca Jones girl. Um, what happened to her where when when uh the police raided her home guns blazing uh well guns guns drawn pointing guns at her and her family over uh over a legal dispute and and a warrant that should have never been served to begin with um didn't make a lot of sense to me uh and and you know so I'm just saying that uh DeSantis has a spot has a has a spotted record. And in most instances, including uh, his handling of coronavirus, I wouldn't say are very positive. Uh, between his coronavirus handling and his relation and his uh, his targeting of Rebecca Jones and her um, and her clear and what seem to be clear violations of her rights uh, as a private citizen and um, being able to you know live without the fear of police barging into your home. Um, that was all very unfortunate, and and these are these are recent events, so it's good to see. Uh, I mean, I'll take the good with the bad. I mean, if, if you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's got nefarious motives here. Um, I think a lot of his motives come down to. Uh, I think a lot of his motives come down to, hey, you're being mean to the Republicans. You're not being nice to conservatives. If you're going to, if, I don't know if he's necessarily against censorship all around or if it's just a matter of him playing his team and uh saying that this isn't a pro i mean this it, it's not fair to only censor conservatives and conservative politicians uh th that that's wrong uh which which it is but uh but i don't know if i don't know if his heart is really in is really in it for um uh, for it being fair for everyone to have that uh to be protected from censorship. Uh, but in, in, uh, in some statements he made, uh, regarding the bill, he mentioned that, uh, organizations like Black Lives Matter or the, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini of, uh, of Iran, these, well, one is a political figure, another is an organization, but they both get to operate and, and, uh, and he claims they've incited violence on, um, on, on Twitter and, and other social media platforms, and yet they haven't done anything to silence uh, Black Lives Matter or the uh, the Ayatollah of uh, of Iran, and 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 uh, and that and it is crazy when you think about it. I mean, I'm not against. I mean, that the the president of Iran. The Ayatollah of Iran is is allowed to use Twitter, but an American president who was elected by seventy five million people isn't allowed or was voted for by seventy five million people ended up losing. He's not allowed to like President Trump isn't allowed to be on Twitter, but the Ayatollah Khomeini is, and uh, Black Lives Matters Black Lives Matter is allowed to so. And, and then he goes on to say that uh, how, you know, how many people tweeted in 2016 and through 2020 that Russia stole the election? Did any of those people get deplatformed? Uh, no, not really. So that's a good point. I mean, the, the whole Russia conspiracy, the whole Russia stole the election conspiracy is uh, is is a conspiracy. Um, and people who've been t who've been pushing that narrative uh, which has been mostly false, um, despite a handful of uh, amateur bot operations done on Facebook with like stupid memes, like meme, like the extent in which it's been blown out of proportion would be counted as uh, as a conspiracy or false information about an election. But yet that is totally legitimate. So you know, DeSantis makes good points here. Uh, and I think, and I, you know, I wish, I wish this bill the best of luck and, uh, hopefully it does something to, uh, well, hopefully it, 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 uh, 
improves his image a little bit because because I think uh, I view DeSantis primarily in a negative uh, light. But hopefully uh, this help. I mean, if he's pushing for free speech, hopefully he's around long enough to see this kind of thing uh, come into fruition and, and to, to spread. Uh, but more importantly, hopefully, um, more importantly, beyond the man who's behind it is is the uh, the principles of, of free speech that I hope uh, are emboldened by this kind of uh, bill. So. Anyway, we'll see how long it takes for this to go through and what kind of concessions they'll make. Uh, the bill is still being drafted, so it's up for, it's still going to be uh, experiencing some changes, I'm sure. So we'll see what happens with it. All right, thank you guys.